This is your boy D back with another video on You Can Be Free. Today I'm going to be talking about leaning not to your own understanding. Last week I had did a video with my cousin and we were talking about fear. And I was talking about a situation where my faith was limited because of the things that I do understand, you know. But the Bible says that we lean not you know, to our own understanding. And I just kind of want to break that down. I feel like God was like really speaking to me this week. And so I'm going to talk a, about a couple of different things on this video, but I'm just going to flow. I'm just going to flow with y'all. So to start off, I'm going to go to Proverbs. I'm going to be uh, speaking from Proverbs three and one, and it starts off my son, keep my law in your heart. No, I'm sorry. Keep my uh, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. And then in verse five, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding, but acknowledge him in all your ways and he'll direct your path. So when I was looking at that earlier, I was just really thinking about how I was seeing it in just a, like a different way, because in the beginning of verse one, it says, forget not my law but then it says keep my commandments in your heart now if you think about this having something in your mind it says forget not my law that's something in your mind but when you have something in your heart that is something completely different because it says keep my law in your heart forget not the law but keep my commandments in your heart and then like i said it goes down to verse uh, five, where he says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, because a lot of times we can have an understanding of the word of God and we can have an understanding of God in our mind, but he is not like deeply rooted in our heart. And when he's when the word of God is not in your heart, you can be moved by certain situations that we face on the earth. Now, the thing is this. When something is in your mind, a lot of stuff goes in our mind, in and out of our mind throughout the day, you know, uh, but when you have something in your heart, it becomes deeply rooted. You have a foundation with it. Now, to give you a better understanding of this, when you think about somebody that is dealing with lust, it's because something has been planted into their life. Everything starts as a seed. And when you water it, it grows, you know, and this is why lust and gluttony is one of the two things that is really, I'm not going to say it's hard to get people free from, but the thing is when something is in your heart, it, it's not something that is easily moved and how it gets into your heart is because you're meditating on it. You're focusing on that thing, you know? And so, you know, when people start off wa uh, watching pornography in their teenage years, and then they now the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, you know, that is something that is in their heart. But when you're battling something like lust, or even depression, and it's just in your mind, you can just, you know, rebuke it, you can think about it for the second, but then you can change the channel. But when it's in your heart, it's going to keep coming back, it's going to keep coming back, because you have focusing on that, you have focused on it for so long, a seed was planted and you watered it. And then now, you know, it's a battle for people to uh, to break these things. But it's the same thing with the word of God. When you meditate on the word of God, you know, consistently. And when you think about it and when you focus on God, you start to believe him and you start to believe in his word. And then when certain things happen, it's hard to really get you moved because it is in your heart. Now. The issue is. Later on, it says lean not onto your own understanding, you know, because the trip part about this walk with Jesus is that when we're going through something and we'll try and when we try to understand him and we try to make sense of him, you will get frustrated because you are trying to think of God on a human level when god is not human he's spirit and a lot of times he does things to us that doesn't make any sense because you know to us it doesn't make sense while a god will ask joshua to march around jericho for seven days without saying anything it doesn't make sense to us how 
Jesus would allow Lazarus to die. He knew he was going to die. And then when he found out about it, he didn't do anything. You know, if that would have been us, if that would have been a human, we would have just prevented a lot of these things. But, you know, the trip part about when I think about my life and when I think about even the Bible, sometimes in the natural, when it seems like the worst thing is actually happening, it's actually the best thing that could happen. You know, God will use your enemies and he'll use the devil to bless you. It's the trials and tribulations that will launch you in to the thing that you are believing for or to the thing that God has called you to do. As crazy as this may sound, may sound uh, me saying this, my mom, okay, I'll put it like this. The day that I found out my mom had cancer, that was one of the worst days of my life. Um, I was a child. I couldn't believe that, you know, she was about to go through something like that. Me going through the whole, from the beginning to the end of me watching her die slowly, in the natural at that point in time in my life, it was the worst thing that I went through. But at the same time, it was the best thing that I ever went to, went through, because had I not gone through that, I wouldn't be before you right now. You know, I would not, everything that I went through from 1999 to 2013, is what has given me the ministry that I have now, which has given me the heart that I have to try to help people that are dealing with uh, drug addiction, people that are dealing with depression, people that are dealing with anger, people that are dealing with demonic oppression, because I've went through all that stuff. And you will never want to help anybody more than people that remind you of your old self. This built me, and it also, I'm not going to say qualified me, because none of us is truly qualified to do anything but, uh, outside of Jesus, but it's given me the experience and also give me uh, the ability to be relatable to people. But at that point in time, I would have never thought that. I wasn't even I wasn't even thinking about that. All I was thinking about is her being healed, you know. Um, but any time that I had went through something and it just seemed like all oh, hell was breaking loose in my life, it was not what it looked like. When Jesus was on the cross, his uh, his boys, his homies, the disciples, they left him. You know, they was in fear even though he had told them over and over and over, like, you know, what was going to happen, but they just thought that they was about to lose him. I'm pretty sure his mom and the, the women that were there by his side, seeing him being beaten like that and bloody, bloody like that and suffering like that. You know, I'm pretty sure they was in tears. I'm pretty sure they thought it was the worst thing that could happen, but they had no idea what God was doing in the spirit. They didn't realize he was changing the world. And sometimes when we're going through things, as Christians, we don't even realize in those, the greater the warfare, the greater the blessing is to come, you know? And when I think about how we are not to lean on our own understanding, but we're just supposed to acknowledge him and trust him with all our heart. See, that's the type of trust that God wants from us. He wants us to trust him beyond what we see, beyond what we feel, or beyond what we understand. Because when we try to make sense of this thing, we'll be messed up, you know? And But we can become to a place where we are so frustrated because we want certain prayers to be answered and we want certain things to change. But we got to realize this. If you think about life, you get a prayer answered and in our minds, we think that's going to bring peace to our life. That's going to bring joy to our life. That's going to bring happiness if we get certain prayers answered. But all it does is really gives us new prayers to pray because every blessing, it comes with some type of uh, burden. I'm not going to say every blessing, but I'm going to say 90% of them. There's times I done call my prayer partners and I've gotten them to come into an agreement with me on certain things because I know the power of agreement. I understand this stuff in the spirit realm. I understand how, you know, we could use scriptures and speak it, you know, and it, it, it will come to pass. And I prayed about getting certain positions last year. I was really wanting this position at work and I didn't get it at that, the time that I wanted it. And I was just, I mean, I wasn't really messed up with it, but at the same time, I was like, dang, like, you know, why didn't I get the job? A year later, I get in the position that I wanted or that I thought that I wanted. And I got somebody to come into an agreement with me about it. I got into that position and I hated it. Next thing you know, you know, I'm getting people, me and, and my prayer partners, we're praying about, you know, that, you know, then I, 
you know, there's other things that I prayed for. I prayed for a better car. I got a better car. Uh, but then I was having some issues with it and I'm praying about that. You know, you can pray for a ministry. Then you got people in the ministry to start getting on your nerves. Now you're praying about that. You can pray for a spouse. You get married and a year or two later, that spouse is getting on your nerves. You praying about that. looks like y'all might be going to a divorce. You know, you can have a kid. You praying for a kid. You get these kids. They get sick. You're praying. What I'm saying is God has life set up to where we're always going to need him and we're always going to depend on him because he's our father. And that's just what, that's what God do. Because you will never, you know, if, if you think that once you even, you know, people who get deliverance in their mind in the beginning, you can think once I get off drugs, you know, everything is going to be all right. But then you start having to deal with the things that you that was kind of keeping you bound in the beginning, because a lot of times people are using drugs because they're trying to escape something. There's something in their life that happened to them or oftentimes in the beginning, everything is all right, but then you start making so many mistakes and now you're dealing with guilt because of things that you did while you were on drugs. And now you want to escape that. Now, when you become free, you have to deal with, with everything that you was running away from. That's why I say people who get free from that stuff, there's some strong people because when you get sober for real, for real, now you got to deal with all that stuff. And we have in our own minds where we think deliverance is something that is not. You can get free from the spirit of lust, but that doesn't mean the temptation is going to leave. That don't mean that anytime you see a woman that you're not going to start thinking thoughts. That's why your mind has to be renewed when it comes to whatever deliverance that you go through in your life. Your mind has to be uh, renewed from this because... What happens is, is that you can, an evil spirit can leave your life, you know, but your mind at one point was in agreement with this evil spirit or whatever, you know, whatever type of old person that you're dealing with. And you have agreed with this for so long. And so there are certain sins to the body that you think that this is going to bring peace in your life. What happens is, is you think that whenever you take Whatever it is that you're doing, you're, you're believing that this sin is the answer to your problem. So you can get free from the spirit that was oppressing you, but you can still have the same belief system. So now you have to renew your mind. But it doesn't go the way that, that people are thinking that it goes. Sometimes people can, you know, get delivered from night spirits that, that was oppressing them in the night. And at first, at one point in time, it was coming to them every week or, you know, every night. And then they get free from the spirit. And then three months later, they have a wet dream or three months later, they have a bad dream. And they're like, dang, the spirit had done come back. It didn't come back. It's just now you're just dealing with the warfare of it. You're dealing with oppression. You're what the what the enemy is really trying to do is making you think that you're not free just because there's temptation there or just because you're having, you know, certain things that happened before you're free. But now you just got to, you know, you just live in life. You just battle with stuff that other people battle with. But I just think sometimes people think that when you get free from something, just because a temptation is there or they want God to really just remove the whole thing. He won't, you know, they want him to remove, you know, the desires and all this stuff. And, you know, deliverance happens in different ways when it comes to me and cocaine, something that I used to love. I have no desire for that, but there was a season where I got delivered from it, but I still had those temptations, you know, then I had to battle those temptations. I had to renew my mind because if your mind is not changed about what you're doing, like you're subject to just continue to go back to the same thing over and over and over. You know, you have to have uh, a changed mind and you have to have it in your heart that you want to be free. But a lot of times people just want to be free from the torment or the consequences of sin. They really don't want to be, they're really in an agreement with it. They really have made friends with these things, but they just, you know, they really don't want to serve God. They don't really do, don't want to have nothing to do with God for real, for real. It's just, they want to be free from, you know, the, the consequences of that. And you got to really search your heart, you know, just to see like, are you really done with this stuff for real, for real? Um, my friend told me a couple of months ago that she had this dream about me and I was burying my mom um, and I was happy about it, you know, and she could understand like, why is he dreaming, you know, this? And it made sense to me because 
when my mom died, that was one of the hardest, if not the hardest thing that I went through in my life. And for many years, I just lived a life of just like pain and, and stuff like that. And just in and out of jail, all types of crazy. I just completely changed. That was a representation of the old me. And when I dream about my mom now, a lot of times I see her sick, still sick. And that is not like a dream from God or the enemy. Uh, and those dreams, what it is, is a representation of how I wish, like, because I pray for people now and I've seen people healed. And I want, I kind of, you know, there's some things that like I wish would have happened in the natural, you know, but um, my friend dreaming that, you know, what it was assigned to me, there's some things from my past that I need to completely let go of, you know, uh, there's nothing that we can do to change certain things, you know, so there's no reason to hold on to things that you cannot change. And, um, you know, this year, myself, some people in my ministry, some, you know, people that I'm close to, you know, December the 30th, we're going to have, you know, a funeral for anything that we do not want to go into 2024, uh, if God allows us to, to see that new year, because tomorrow's not promised. But the thing is, it's like, you know, oftentimes we put up with things and we hold on to the things and uh, we keep leaving, we keep living the same year after year after year. And, you know, for some people, they don't want to go into 2024 with the same mindset or with the same fears or with the same sins or, you know, um, you know, or even like holding on to fear or holding on to unforgiveness. And what we're going to do, we're going to write a letter to whatever it is. If it's drugs, write a letter to drugs. If it's addiction to pornography, write a letter to that. And we're just going to uh, bury it, burn it up. You know what I mean? Because a lot of times people wait till the ne the new year to let go of something. But I'm just telling my people now, like start now, because some things are actually hard to let go of, especially if it's something, if you're holding on to unforgiveness because of something that happened to you that was really painful as a child and you just want to let that go. You can say every day, I forgive this person, but it could still be in your heart. Cause like I said, when you, how things get into your heart is when you meditate on it day and night, you know? And so I'm just telling people now begin to prepare your mind to, you know, for what you're willing to let go of, because in the book of Isaiah, I think it's 43, God says, do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old for behold, I should do a new thing. And now it shall come forth. There's so much that God is wanting to do for us, you know, that is new, but we're holding on to old things. We're holding on to old relationships and God wants to bring us new relationships. We're holding on and staying faithful to things that, that hurt us. Because even what I was talking about earlier, lean not on your own understanding, uh, but trust in God with all your heart. Sometimes we have so much trust for the things that are oppressing us. We trust in this stuff. We will be loyal to it. We have trust, you know, in our addictions. We trust in that. We believe in this addiction. We believe that we're deep down inside, not going to be free from it. We can have trust in Satan. We believe that he's going to attack us every night. You know, you can have trust in sickness. You're researching this. You know, you're believing in it. You're believing that the cancer is going to come back. You trust in this. And whatever comes more real to you is your God. You know, if crack cocaine is more real to you, that's your God. If lust is more real to you than God, then that's your God. And what we can do is we actually can, this is how demonic spirits are actually worshiped because in the old Testament, you know, they would build altars for these demons. Demons love our worship. And regardless if we're worshiping, worshiping them through masturbation, we don't realize we're giving spirits worship, whether if we are uh, in fear of them, that's a form of worship. If we're constantly focused on bad things happening, we're giving them worship. If it's lust or perversion or whatever that is, we're giving them worship. They want to be worshiped just like God, you know, because they're spirits. And sometimes we can just have so much trust and things like really never getting better. And I always ask people like, you got to really think what is in your heart deep down inside, whatever you're praying about, do you believe it? Do you really believe something is going to change? Because if not, why pray? If not, like why even you know, like do some of the things that we do, because if we live the way that we truly believe, I'm talking about when it comes to the word of God, if we lived like we believe that you're going to see a change in your life, 
you know, but the thing is, is when it comes to this, what we're, what we're battling with, we're in a spiritual war. So it's all about consistency because the devil is not playing with people. He will not give up that. That is one stubborn thing. He's going to be consistent on his attack. So we got to be consistent in spiritual warfare. But what happens with a lot of people is they'll go through deliverance or they will start praying about a situation and in the beginning it gets worse and they get so moved by what they see but the bible says we walk by faith and not by sight because god knows he knows in his word that there's going to be things that's going to happen that will test your faith because all of these things that we go through it's meant to test our faith you know jesus said to pit he said to peter that the enemy has desired to sniff you out as we, but I have prayed for you. Think about this. The thing that Jesus prayed for Peter was that his faith do not fail because that is so, that's so important to God. It's all about our faith. And that's what the devil is after. And sometimes he just uses the same tricks on people because he knows that if we go hard after God and he comes into our life, we're easily moved by this. You know, he could easily just you know, trip us up every time because we're getting caught up on the things that we see and the things we hear. We pray about a situation. We pray about our kids. The kids get worse, you know, that it makes us not want to pray. But we gave up, you know, you got to be strong. You got to be consistent. You got to be stubborn. The way that we were stubborn, some of us were stubborn in the world when it came to our parents, when it came to going hard in the streets and all this other stuff, we got to have that same momentum when it comes to God. But um, I'm going to end this video with that. But for people that watch this, I want I want y'all to when it comes to giving things up in this world, there are some people that are watching this or will watch this. And God will have been speaking to you about giving up certain things. He's been convicting you about it, but you're holding on to it. Be careful, because in this next year. Like I said, it's not even so much the devil's not playing with people. God is not playing with people. You know, we're living in some crazy times. I don't know when he's coming back, uh, but I do believe that it's going to be in my generation, you know, regardless if it's a year, 5, 10, 15, 20, you know, things are changing and uh, there's so much stuff going on in the world. And this is not a time to play because there's going to come a time in your life when you're going to wish if you are playing, there's going to come a time in your life when you're going to wish you took this stuff seriously. And by then, by that time, you're going to just. You know, it, it hopefully it won't be too late because God is good and he gives us grace. And I made a lot of mistakes. I didn't get here by, you know, being perfect. But there's some things that I didn't have to go through. You know what I mean? Uh, and so that's why I'm speaking that to you. So you don't have to make things hard on yourself. But uh, as I always say, for whoever's watching this, no matter what you're dealing with, just know that you can be free because who the sun has set free is free indeed. I love y'all and I am out.